I've got a very powerful lesson for all of you today. And you want to watch this over and over again. I am going to talk about the goal achievement process. See, goal setting is an intellectual exercise. Goal achievement happens by exact law. And most people are striving for goals instead of attracting it by the person they are. Now, whenever we look at goal achieving, it first starts, my goal for you is to earn more money. See, I want you to look at what you're earning right now. It's not happening by, by accident. It's coming from you, not to you. And I will tell you, and I'm at the top of the list with this, all of us can do so much better. And then we look at enjoy more freedom. Well, you're never going to enjoy more freedom if you're not earning what the right amount of money that the freedom is going to allow you. So we want to constantly be upgrading our income. And that's something we're in control of every day by our thinking, by our actions, by getting out of our comfort zone. I want you to really earn a lot more freedom. And then we look at this, live the life you were destined to live. You are here on this planet to live it on your terms. Now, I can tell you for many years, I did not live it on my terms. So if you're sitting there watching this saying, well, I'm not living it on my terms. I'm really in bondage. I'm really tight, paycheck to paycheck. I have a lot of debt. You want to pay attention to this lesson because my belief, when my life changed, I made a, a line in the sand, firm decision that I was not going to settle regardless of what was going on on the outside. And on the outside was not good. I was 150,000 in debt. I was significantly overweight and I was very unhappy. I knew there was more for me. And when I made a commitment that I was really going to get into this philosophy and do exactly what my mentor taught me, all of a sudden, over a year, my life changed so dramatically and I started living the way I was destined to live. Now, let's look at this world-class goals. I want you to look at your goals right now. Do you have goals that you think you can achieve or are they really big goals? This is how I want to live. At the end of the year, most people are setting their new year up, looking at goals that are 5% better than they did the year before, 10% better. I want you to set goals that you really want. Forget about if you've never done them before. You may have never committed to it like you're going to commit right now. You may have never made a firm decision that you are going to lock in for one year and really understand and operate this philosophy. Now, if you look at your results, your results tell you how well you understand what I'm teaching. Not sometimes, but all the time. So we want to set big world-class goals, goals that are going to cause you to grow before you're going to achieve them. Now, if we're going to achieve goals, we have to understand who we are. Who are you? Your spiritual DNA is absolutely perfect. There is nothing inside of you that you're lacking. We've got to bring your perfection out. So your spiritual DNA is perfect. It needs no modification or improvement. There is nothing that you are lacking. And we have to understand that it is all knowing. You have all the you have access to all the knowledge in the world. You have the same access that all the superstars have. All the elite performers have, you have it. So we have to understand that. And it is all powerful. You have access to all the power in the world. I was on vacation a couple of weeks ago and I was reading an article that a mechanic got stuck under his car and his 75-year-old mother picked up the car. He thought he was dead. And they asked the mother afterwards, where did you get that power? She says, I don't know. It was just adrenaline. Well, what she doesn't understand and what we all have to understand that we have so much power when we need it. I want you to access that power every day. And then we look at it is ever present. It is everywhere in the world. When you're traveling, it is still with you. It is always with you. So we've got to understand that our spiritual DNA is perfect. And it is 
the real you. Now, I want you to look at your results. My mentor used to tell me this all the time. He said, look at the results. Are you truly who you're pretending to be? If you're not making it happen, you're not understanding that your spiritual DNA is perfect. Now, to achieve the real significant world-class goals, we've got to do the real work. What is the real work? It's deep intentional work. It's not surface level. It's asking ourselves the right questions and being so honest with ourselves. You're not going to get the results if you don't do that deep intentional work. And so why questions? Questions shape performance. Questions shape behaviors. So what type of questions are you asking yourself? Ask yourself great questions. The best question we can ask ourselves is, who do I need to become to achieve a world-class life? What am I currently doing? Who am I pretending to be? How can today be the very best day of my life? You want to start asking these questions. I was j just coming home from a world-class wealth event. We have a program called World Class Wealth. And if you've never been there, you've got to get in there. Call one of my coaches, get involved in it. It'll change your life. But I told everybody in the audience, I said, there's, there's four questions I ask myself every day. Number one is, are you going to conquer yourself today? I, you have to conquer yourself. That's number one. Number two, do I have a goal that inspires me? And number three and number four are more statements. It's, I am not letting the outside circumstances control me. And number four is I'm going to listen to myself to really understand what I'm saying to myself. Because the most important conversations are the conversations we have with ourselves. These are four key components to crushing your day. I mean, absolutely being in control of your day. And every day, every one of us has a brick wall in front of us, and that's present results. We never want to come from present results. We want to come from our future self. Now, discipline changes the game. It, it is such a competitive advantage from somebody who's disciplined and somebody who's not. When I first was getting mentored, my mentor shared with me, he said, I'm going to tell you right now, none of this happens without discipline. And I said, well, I'm not disciplined at all. He said, well, we've got to change that. I said, I always start and stop, start and stop. And he said, that's because you never got the proper direction. Well, I realized I did never discipline my thinking. And then once I made the change, and I'm going to give it to you very simple. If you want to have discipline, stop disciplining your activities. That's an effect. I want you to discipline your thinking. I want you to think from this point on, I am going to accept ideas from my future self, and I'm going to reject ideas from my future self. If my future self would not say yes to something, it's a hard no for me. And if my future self would say no, I honor that no. That is when my life changed. Discipline your thinking. But let's ask ourselves, here's some better questions. What can you do with an unwavering level of self-discipline? I want you to ask yourself this question. And I want you to pause this and answer this question. Get out a notebook and answer it. What would my life look like if I had an unwavering level of self-discipline, where discipline was part of my identity? And then we'll ask the question, how would your life really look? Like, what would you be experiencing with an unwavering level of discipline? And then another great question is, what do you think you can achieve? Look at discipline right now. Wherever your results are, we'll tell you what you are practicing in terms of discipline in your life. So the number one question always comes, what do you really want more than anything else in the world? I have people I mentor all over the world, and they come to me in the beginning with all these different wants, or they'll come to me, I don't know what I want. It's one or the other. This question is really the game changer in your life. What do you really want? Your want is the biggest X factor we have. Our want creates so much power within us. What do you really want? I want you to think about this. What do you really want more than anything else in the world? One want that would bring all your other wants and fulfill them. That's your want. So this is 
the starting point is that I know exactly what I want. I'm defining what I want. Remember, success comes down to three simple questions. Do I know what I want? Number one. Number two, have I determined what the price for me to achieve what I want is? And number three, am I willing to pay the price? That's all success comes down to. You want to make success so simple in your mind. But it always starts with the X factor. What do I really want more than anything else in the world? Then what I want you to do is never settle. I watch people, they don't see the results. They accept lesser goals. Big mistake. Never accept lesser goals. It takes just as much energy to achieve something magical in your life than it does small things. Never settle. Always be grateful for what you have, but never be satisfied and never settle. That's going to kill your goals. Now, if we're going to achieve goals, you have to understand you're never going to achieve them without changing your programming. What is a, a program? It is your paradigm. It's your underlying belief system that is getting you all your results in your life right now. Now, I want you to pay close attention to this. I learned this from my mentor, and he burned this idea in my mind. I want you to look at this slide. There are only two things you need to understand to create great wealth. You have to know where you are, and you have to know where you're going. Doesn't seem that hard, but we have to fill in the gap of who we have to become, what action steps to take from where we are to where we're going. Now, it's so simple that it's so easy to reject. It is so simple. You want to make this philosophy so simple for you. But why are so many people stuck if it's so simple? It's because they are constantly seeing themselves as where they are, where they need to see themselves from where they're going. But if you look right here, are you just constantly every day looking from where you are right now? I want you to look from where you're going. You have to think, feel, and act like the person who's already achieved what they want. And people are stuck because they're always seeing themselves with their five senses, seeing what they're currently experiencing. I shared with you in the beginning, you have to understand your biggest obstacle is right here, where you are. You don't have to think about where you are. You already know where you are. So why do we obsess about it? Because the paradigm comes in and, and keeps that on our mind. Well, this isn't working. I better try something else. No, you've got to go deeper, but you've got to discipline yourself to see yourself and think, feel, and act from where you're going. But the paradigm is the only thing holding you back. Until you change the paradigm, your result is not going to change. Your results in your life will not change. Now, Let's take a good look at this. Now, this is the number one thing that is holding people back. This is you. You have a conscious mind. You have five senses that are connected to your conscious mind. And you have a subconscious mind. And you have a body. Now, if you're letting the outside results permit you to think what you've always thought, you're not going to get different results. I watch people sabotage themselves all the time. They look with their senses, they see it with their eyes where they are. So they keep letting the results control them. Then look at this. This is you. You have a conscious mind, you have a subconscious, and you have a body. What we want to do is stop letting the outside results control your thinking, and we want to work from our higher faculties. Look at this. We have these higher faculties, our memory, our perception, our will, our imagination, our intuition, and our reasoning. Now, how many of you are practicing them in your life? These higher faculties are what is creating your results. They create your environment. When you're really winning, you're using your higher faculties for you. When you're really losing, you're using them against you. And the people who are really winning have no idea for most of them. 98% of the population have no idea what the higher faculties are. We want to practice these every day. And when you do, you're going to create effortless success. But we have to make it a foundation that I am not allowing my present circumstances to control me. I'm letting my goal drive everything I'm doing. You're a, you get an idea and you accept it 
with your imagination, it seeps deep into your subconscious mind, and that's what's creating your results. Now, think about this. We have a power that's flowing in and through us within a couple seconds, one to two seconds, and we're either accepting or rejecting the idea. An aware person is only thinking about what they want. An unaware person is constantly letting the outside control them. Now, I will tell you this, this is not easy, but it is essential. I remember one day my mentor and I were talking and he said, what do you think was the biggest jump for you? And it was this slide right here. I said, I stopped allowing the outside to control my thinking and I kept getting better and better at it. And he said, he said, you know, it's the hardest thing to do. I said, I know, but it's essential. He said, you hit it on the nose. It is essential because you have this thought coming in and whatever idea you're accepting, you're emotionalizing it into your subjective mind. Now, what we want you to do at Voss Coaching Co. is I want you to know what you want and then we've got to see yourself already with that. Now, I'm going to show you the trick. How do you see yourself with it? You see yourself by disciplining your five senses. I want you to see, feel, hear, taste, and touch what you would feel, what you would see, feel, hear, taste, and touch as you already achieved your goal. In the repetition of doing this, you're training your subconscious mind on how what mood is connected to it. And you remember your subconscious mind is where your power is. It creates 96 to 98 percent of your results but your subconscious mind has no ability to think. Your conscious mind is where your intellect resides. It's where all your higher faculties are. That's where we think. And we want to keep through repetition, dumping our want into our subconscious mind over and over and over and over again. And once you do, it's going to turn from a want into a desire. And once it's in a desire, it's not just a desire in your subconscious mind. It's a desire and universal subconscious, and the whole universe conspires on your behalf to make it a reality. And then it's going to alter your vibration, and once your vibration is altered, it's going to dictate what you attract. All the conditions, circumstances, and your environment matches your goal, and that's the creation process. Now, look at this. If you're going to achieve world-class goals, really big goals, the goals that are worthy of you, you cannot put your energy on what's missing. Most people are constantly thinking about what's missing. We cannot put our energy on what's missing. We cannot put our energy on present results. And we cannot put our energy on the past. Let the past die. The past is dead. I want you to transform your past, heal it, and start creating an amazing future. And we cannot, this is what most people do. They put their energy on what others want for them. So they're not a star in their own movie. They're wanting to conform to their environment. You will never achieve big goals this way. Now, I want you to take a look at this because nothing happens without decision making. Now, I want you to look at this. You have that power we just went over is going right through you based on whatever you accept or reject. And remember, if you're not rejecting an idea that is sabotaging you, with your imagination, you accept it right away, and it goes right to your subconscious. Now, what are you going to choose? Are you going to choose your goal? Now, I want you to look at this. I know for so many years, I was studying this philosophy, and it was not working for three years. And it wasn't because it wasn't working. I wasn't working it properly. So you have a goal, and you say, I really want to achieve financial freedom. That is my goal. I want to achieve financial freedom. And you say, I, I'm reading the books. I've hired mentors, but I'm not getting the results. Well, you'll always know because the old conditioning is still there. The old conditioning is the dominant idea in your mind. And what it's going to do, it's constantly going to operate with worry, doubt, and fear. If you have fear as your dominant idea, if you are not getting out of your comfort zone, you're not going to achieve the goal. That's just, the, that's just the deal. And you've got to understand, when you are your dominant idea is worry, doubt, and fear, you're infecting your central nervous system with worry, doubt, and fear. 
And guess what you're going to attract? Exactly what you don't want. Now, how do you change this? You Once you have a goal and you've discovered your watch, you have to make a definite decision that no way am I giving in to the outside. I am going to change my old conditioning. A definite decision, it's already done in your mind. See, most people don't understand decision making. They think a decision is something that they say, I'm going to do this when this happens. It's got to already be done in your mind. And remember, fear is not your problem. Doubt is. Doubt, every time you have doubt, I want you to tell yourself, oh, interesting, that's just old conditioning. That doubt is from the past, but once you look it in its eye, it's going to disappear. So what we have to do is stop infecting ourselves with worry, doubt, and fear because it goes right into our central nervous system, and that's why people are stuck like they're in quicksand. They say, I want this, but they don't have the courage to get out of their comfort zone. Why? Because they've accepted the doubt and the doubt has turned into fear. Now, how do you, how do you shift this? You make an absolute irrevocable decision that I am not letting doubt control me any longer. If I'm going to doubt anything, I'm going to doubt my doubts. I am not giving into the doubts. And when you make a definite decision, now the old conditioning doesn't have control of you. Remember, a definite decision is it's already accomplished in my mind. So you make that decision no different than if you were gonna go, go to a steakhouse and order steak. You wouldn't wonder if it was gonna happen. You wouldn't wonder if you were gonna receive the steak. That's what we have to do with our goals. Our want is putting out the request. Now what we have to do is develop the habits and attitudes and behaviors, but those are not even coming forth unless we make a definite decision. When you make a decision, this is what I'm doing no matter what. Your wife, your husband, the people in your environment say, oh, they're crazy. Say, that's great. But this is where I'm going. I am creating the life that I want. And when you make that decision, now you're in harmony on three parts of your personality on what you want. That's why nothing happens without a decision. So we want to make a decision that's in harmony with your goal. And this is why accepting and rejecting ideas are so important. And you're going to see the results. It happens for every single person by exact law. We have to understand this. Our job is to think what we would think had we achieved the goal. Train ourselves to feel the way we would feel had we achieved our goal. And then we're going to attract everything we need in terms of getting the results we want. Now, when we look at this goal... I want this goal to be so big in your mind, like a billboard. Like if you were driving on the freeway, how big a billboard is. When you have that goal so big in your mind, you're not going to get distracted by the outside world. But if the goal is, the goal is small, it's not mixed with a decision, the first sign of adversity, you're going to wilt. It happens for every single person. That's why when you build the goal, mix it with decision, Mix it, the decision with discipline, now you're on your way. But I want the goal to be so big in your mind. Now, I want you to look at this. What types of goals am I setting? Am I setting a goal that I've already achieved? That's called an average goal. You've already done it. Are you setting a good goal? You've never done it, but you know you can. You'll say, oh, I can work harder. I don't want you to work hard. I want you to work smart. I want you to attract the type of life you want by the person you become. The types of goals I want you to set are big 10x goals. These are the world-class goals that are at the world-class energy. They're way, way up here where nobody can see it. Everybody thinks you're crazy. But remember, the top 1%, everybody thought they were crazy. You are not crazy. You are going to achieve it. When you accept that goal and say, this is what I'm doing, you are going up to that world-class energy, and whatever your heart desire is waiting for you to claim it. Once you accept it, now you're giving it life. Our goals, we have to give life. We have to breathe life into it. We have to be laser focused. This is what I'm doing no matter what. And when you're setting a big goal, it's going to stretch you. It is not going to be in your comfort zone. You have to choose courage over comfort. You got to burn this idea in your mind. When you choose courage over comfort, you're betting on yourself. You are not allowing anyone to get in your way. Now, 
how can you bulletproof your goals with the power of five? The power of five is so huge. I, I was telling this story earlier today. I have a great client that I've been mentoring for about a year and a half. And she came to me one day and she said, Arash, I'm stuck. And I said, I can help you with this. And I said, this is all I want you to do. I said, I want you to become the power of five. And I said, we're going to put everything else down and this is all I want you to do. So I told her that from this point on, I want all her attention focused on, did I make decisions today like the decisions I would make if I achieved that goal? And if the answer is no, we have to adjust and do it tomorrow. And then I said, what disciplines would you have if you achieved your goal? So everything is coming from the goal. A few disciplines compounded over time are going to create the big results. Then we said, what type of standards would you have if you achieve that goal? You live those standards today. And every day is day one. Every single day is day one. Then we said, what type of image would you have? Are you thinking, feeling, and acting like the person who achieved the goal? And then the last, but definitely not least, because nothing changes until you change your perception of yourself, your attitude of yourself. This is all I had her do. Within six weeks, her words, not mine, she had a massive windfall. And this is all I worked with her on. Everything was coming from the goal by the decisions, the disciplines, the standard, the image, and the attitude. The power of five will prevent you from drifting. Now, if we're going to achieve world-class goals, we have to be detached. We've got to be in a neutral state. When you're attached to anything, it owns you. Get your mind in a neutral state and you'll move in the direction of your goal quicker than you could imagine. Neutral is not positive or negative, but it is so powerful because it's where the truth is. Where I'll look at my, my activities in a day and I'll say, did I practice the power five? The only way I can get the answer is if I'm neutral. When you're neutral, then you could course correct and say, tomorrow I'm going to shift this. I'm going to shift this activity. I'm going to do it with more confidence or more uh, swagger. But the key here is we have to get in the habit of detaching from our five senses. Our five senses are here for us to enjoy life. When you detach from your five senses, this is where freedom is created. When you are attached to the outside world, then you're going to be in bondage. You are going to be playing in a very small box. A small box is not going to achieve world-class goals or a world-class life. Now, look at this. This is the deal. It's clear intention with attention and detaching from your five senses draws to you what you want. What does it mean, clear intention? I'm putting my mind on exactly what I want. Now, true prosperity comes from replacing what you don't want with what you want. And then we put attention. When you put attention on something, you lock into the idea. You have so much focused energy and so much power that the universe draws it to you. Everything is energy. Right now, you and I, everything in our life is exactly what we're in harmony with. You want better, then you've got to be better. You want a better future, you've got to fall in love with that future. And so we've got to understand it's clear intention with attention but detaching from our five senses. So we're disciplining the five senses. That's how we're detached. Where, how do you discipline them? You see what you want to see as you already achieved your goal. What would you see with your eyes if you achieved your goal? You see that all day long. What would you hear from the close people around you congratulate? You hear that now. What would you touch? Would you get yourself a gift celebrating the goal that you just achieved? What would you taste? I mean, you've got to start really disciplining them, and that's how, how this works. But here is something I want you to take a close look at. This is such an important slide. Most people create from a place of not having it. They're constantly coming from what's missing. And we already said earlier, if you want to create a world-class life, you can't focus on what's missing. When you're focused on not having it, that's where all your energy and attention is. You have to create from a place of worthiness that I am worthy of the good that I desire and I'm training my subconscious to really feel what I would feel had I achieved that goal. 
And the minute you do this, you get to the point where you are out of the way and the universe knows you're out of the way and it will draw, draw your goals to you effortlessly, draw the people to you, the conditions, the circumstances and the environment. But understand, if you want to get there faster, you've got to discipline your imagination. Practice visualizing constantly. Go on my YouTube page. I have a visualization that I walk you through. Do it three times a day. You're going to start seeing how effortless your results are going to come. But look what the power of imagination does. Number one, it benefits when you discipline your imagination, so you're only allowing what you want inside of you. That's called subjective control. And it allows you to enter in the spirit of it. What is the spirit of it? You're getting to the cause of the good you desire. And then we look at, it improves your focus. It locks you in. It locks you on exactly what you want. Focus. Whatever we focus on expands or grows. Focus is the best work habit that any individual can develop. And the, it's the language of the soul. That's how your subconscious understands it through emotions. When you get a picture that you get emotionally involved with, you're going to draw it to you so quickly. And that's what we un want to understand. But let's go deeper into imagination. Imagination is what is creating action. That's what gets your body into action. You accept an idea or reject an idea, you do it with your imagination. You want to understand the power of imagination. Einstein says logic will take you from A to B. Imagination takes you everywhere. So let's simplify the goal achievement process. There's only three key components of it. Number one, you have to fuse with it. When you fuse with it, you become one with it. It's like a great marriage. The husband and wife are so synchronistic with each other. You're one with it. That's when you fuse with the goal. So when you're fused with it, your thinking changes, your thinking upgrades. You're gonna know when you're fused with it because the type of actions you take are so different. They're bold, you have a lot more confidence, you're operating with swagger, you have no idea if it's gonna work, but you're willing to fail in order to succeed. And then we look at step two. What are, is the number one identity-based behavior that I could make a part of my identity that would achieve that goal? Would it be doing it now? Would it be discipline? Would it be becoming great at selling ideas? What would that be? And you, you always determine it by the goal. The goal always determines the, determines the process. So if somebody's sitting there and want to improve their sales, a great identity-based behavior would be practicing their sales presentation every day. If somebody is raising money, it'd be, I'm going to reach out to 10 people every day to raise money for my foundation. You have to identify what is that first one identity-based behavior. Then you go to the second identity-based behavior once it would be harder not to do than to do. And then the third step is being process-driven. What does that mean? I'm, I am taking action every day. Every day I'm planning my day the night before and I am acting on three to six goal-achieving activities. I want you to look at your goals like a tree. You're not gonna hit a tree one time and with an ax and you're gonna knock it down. You've gotta do the repetition of doing it over and over again. That's where these three to six goal achieving activities changes the game. All you have to do is these three to create and achieve the type of life you want. Number one, I know the goal, so I'm thinking, feeling, and acting like that person. I'm fused with it. I'm identifying what identity-based behaviors would achieve the goal, and I focus on the most important one first. And then number three, I'm process-driven. So I'm focused on three to six goal-achieving activities every day. Now, look at this. It is about doing the work. The work is consistency. The work is practicing your mindset and training yourself. The work is not the results. The results will take care of itself if you're practicing your processes every day. And so make your hours epic, make them so good. How do you do it? You do it with focus. You do it with, when you're going after your goal achieving activities, you're doing it in 30, 60, 90 minute sprints, where these are focus sprints where you do not get distracted. 
You literally put your phone on do not disturb. And then you practice the power of five. You focus on making decisions from your goal, living the standard of how you would live. Has you, have you already achieved your goal? You're going to operate with the disciplines of what you would have if you already achieved the goals right now. This is the key. We do it right now in the present moment. And then nothing happens without understanding how important identity is. Your self-image is a direct reflection of what you attract in your life, but it's a direct reflection of what you feel worthy that you deserve. So you think, feel, and act like that person. And then you have the most positive mental attitude. You are always looking for the good in everything. And listen, practice those three to six goal achieving activities without taking action, it's delusion. And here's the interesting thing. It's not about doing a million things. It's about doing one thing 10,000 times and you're gonna become a master. It takes five great hours a day to create world-class results. And when you do this, you're gonna see how effortless your goal achievement is. And then your next goal follows the same process and it's gonna be so much more effortless because you've already done it. You know you can do it. Now, you wanna lock this in, this idea right here. The more disciplines you have, the more confident you will be. The more disciplined you become, the more easily motivated you are and the more wins you're gonna create every day. It takes discipline to create freedom. Discipline is the prequel to freedom. The results come from practicing your processes consistently over time. Fall in love with your goal. Get into the spirit of it. When you're in the spirit of it, you're going to attract the good you desire. I want you to watch this over and over and over again, and you're going to see goal achievement is going to be a part of your identity. Quantum leaps, you're going to understand. You're going to create one after the next. Watch this over again. Thank you so much.